worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're a great God, Lord. Oh, you're an almighty God, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you're one, Lord, that we can call on at the midnight hour, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh, we just give you the praise, Lord. We give you the glory, Lord. Oh, and we just thank you, Lord, that your word is real in our lives, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord. Oh, move according to your spirit, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart is acceptable in your sight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Just have your way, Holy Spirit. We lock arms in the spirit realm, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this place today, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Have your way, have your way, Lord. Oh, Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God. You are worthy, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, we glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, Lord God. Oh, we glorify your name, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, Lord God. You are worthy, Lord God. There is none like you, Father. There is none greater than you, God. Oh, we just thank you this morning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You be glorified. You be magnified. We adore you this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we just want to give you the glory this morning, Lord. We want to give you the glory this morning, Father. We want to give you the glory this morning, Lord God. You be high and lifted up. You be high and lifted up, Lord. You be high and lifted up. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We declare your glory, God. We declare your glory. We declare your glory. Hallelujah. We declare your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to Living Word Church. We welcome you if you are in this building, if you are joining us on Facebook Live, on YouTube. We welcome you into this place. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you to give God the glory and the honor and the praise and to declare his glory with us. Declare his glory in your homes. Declare his glory if you're listening on your job, in your your car. We invite you to declare his glory. Hallelujah. Yarabosha, yarabosata. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 You be glorified. You be glorified. Hallelujah. 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 
hallelujah you'll be glorified hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah Oh, hallelujah, show you the book of Rabababoshata. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord God, thank you, Lord God, thank you, Lord God. Oh, Rabaseke, we declare your glory. We declare your glory in this place. 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 We 
declare your glory in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You be glorified. You be glorified. You be glorified. Hallelujah. We declare your glory. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. You are worthy, my God. Because you're good, God. You're a great God. We declare your glory because you're a great God. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God. There's no one like you nowhere.
Father, there is something. There's something about your presence. It's about your presence. It's about your presence. Yes, God. Father, we invite your presence. We invite your presence to consume us. Consume us. Yes, Lord God. It's something about the presence of the Almighty God. Oh, the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Almighty God. Yes, Lord God, yes, Lord God, we welcome. Oh, we welcome, we welcome you, Lord God. Oh, we welcome, we welcome, we welcome you. We welcome, you're so welcome, you're welcome. Come on, welcome. Oh, my God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to welcome you, glory to God, to Living Word Church. And uh, it's a church of love, worship, and the anointing. It's a church of worship. <laughs> it's a church of worship. So don't be surprised that we worship. <laughs> Because that's what this church is. Yeah, yeah. It's a church of love, worship, and the anointing. Glory be to God. And it's transforming lives yes. by the word. Yes, God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. A church of love, worship, and the anointing. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And the more you quote that, the more you say it, the more it would become. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, as I was standing here, and I was just thinking about worship, and I was just thinking about the spirit, how, you know, we can activate the spirit realm by worship. Because he said, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And so I began to think about how Jesus, in John 17, how, you know, he started praying for us, the church, us. He said, Lord, don't take them out of the world. He said, but I want you to keep them just like you did me. Uh -huh. And while I was in this world. And so God gave us, sent us the Holy Spirit. I want you to listen to me. And uh, he sent us the Holy Spirit. And he said, the word of God say that they that walk in the spirit will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh-huh. I want you to hear me now. He said, they that walk in the spirit, walk, walk, walk. When I walk, I'm walking, okay? They say, they that walk in the spirit will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And so God said to me, he said, the reason that we are not walking in the spirit like we're supposed to. We're not walking. We are visiting. We visit the spirit. On Sunday morning, you visit worship. Uh-huh, but what you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and come on. He said, you don't walk in the spirit. You visit the spirit. And he said, that's why you're fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Ah, Shabbat, Shebe, Sebo, Shabbat, Shebebe, Sunday, Kasababo. See, but we're expecting what God want to do for us. He want to grow us up. So to be, stop being babies. And he want to grow us up to be mature Christians. And the only way that we're going to be mature Christians, we're going to have to walk in the spirit. Because the flesh want to do it the flesh way. But the flesh way is not God's way. See, it's things that God going to tell you to do in the spirit that your flesh don't want to do. The spirit will tell you to forgive that person. But that flesh says, no, I'm going to hold on to this. But God said, I want you to walk in the spirit and I want you to let go of the flesh. But my flesh said, no, I want to for, uh, not forgive them. I want to hold on. And God said, the day is coming that my children are going to do what I tell them to do. And it's not going to be because I audibly tell you, but you're going to look in my word. And you're going to see what the word of God say. And you're going to operate from my word. It say, they that continue in my word they shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free so when you get in the word of god and you begin to walk in the love of god you're going to let unforgiveness go that's not a part of the kingdom it's a part of the natural realm and we are supposed to be kingdom kids oh shabbat seven good. Sunday. i want to help somebody to grow up in here you've been babies long enough yeah, yeah. And now it's time to become mature adults and walk in the spirit so God can take you where he want to take you. 
You'll never go where God want to take you as long as you're walking with a fence on your shoulder all the time. Ah, Shabbat. God, the Spirit of, the Spirit of God can't fall upon you like it want to because the flesh. There are all these chips on your shoulders. And yeah, come on, y'all. We got to grow up so we can go to the next place in God. God is ready to release signs, wonders, and miracles. But we come in with all our stuff. We come in wanting to do it our way. I lift my hands if I feel like it. And if I don't feel like it, I'm not going to feel, do it. But he said, how beautiful uh, when the brethren dwell together in unity, when we lift our hands in unity, yeah. when we worship God. He yeah. said, when, when brethren dwell together in unity, he said, there I command my blessings. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm just only telling you the word of God. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. Whether you like it or not, it's the word of God. And so I just want to encourage you. How many of you are tired of being a baby? I've been a baby long enough. I've been a baby long enough. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of bad, Minister Pierre, to be 73 years old and still a baby. How in the world can you fuss at him? When you acting like a baby. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's good. I done trained you to act like a grown up. And now you got a child. And you still acting like a baby. What land's going to do if you still acting like a baby? That's, good. That's the way we got to look at it. If your children see you gossiping and backbiting and complaining and carrying on, what you expect yeah, yeah. your children to do? Right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right. Come on, y'all. <laughs> It's growing on time. It's growing on time. If you want what God wants for you, it's time to grow up. What it look like? I'm going to sit and gossip with Angela. What that look like? What am I telling Angela? It's okay yeah. Yeah. to gossip about people. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on, y'all. You know, I, I never know what God going to say. But I just want to be open to the Holy Ghost. Because God want to move. God want to speak, sweep. God want to sweep through here. He want to sweep through. But as long as we sitting with our stuff, holding on to us, we, we, can, we, we need to come in and just shake ourselves and say, God, you know, I've been holding on to me long enough, and I just want you to sweep through this place. I want you to kill I, I'm gonna kill my flesh. Mm -hmm. My flesh done ruled long enough. It's time out. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all still love me? Yes. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ain't got no choice. You got to. <laughs> if you really want to go to heaven. Right. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's just stand for our pastor. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Kosababa. Lord, we thank you for showing up this morning. Thank you for changing lives this morning. You heard our prayers and intercessions. Lord God, our desire is to please you, Father. And so we want to say thank you. Thank you. We yield to you, Father. Thank you for cleansing us. Thank you for taking the scales off of our eyes. Thank you, Lord God, for showing us how to walk in holiness. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So cool. I by both of you. Oh, Lord God, we give you the praise and give you the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father. We're going from glory to glory. As we yield to the Holy Ghost, he'll take us places that we didn't think we could have gone. But we must yield to him because sometimes the process, it won't be comfortable. 
The process may not be familiar, but you follow because of who you're following, not because you understand where he's leading you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's where faith comes in at. Where you trust him with all your heart and lean down to your own understanding. You're not moved by your feelings. You're not moved by what you think. You're not moved by what you know. You're moved by what he knows. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord God, we give you all the praise and glory right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's a stirring in the realm of the Spirit. God has taken us. I'm going to say some of us. He's taking us to places where we can have a, an impact on lives. But now we're going to have to decrease because it's not about me. It's not about me being exalted. It's about where he's sending me. Oh, Tababaka. Use me, Holy Ghost. Send me wherever you want me to go. Let me realize I'm not going so I could be exalted. I'm going so you could be exalted. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Dismiss the children. Children dismissed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I just yield to you, Father. You've heard our prayers and concerning the service and your people. Now let me decrease. Let them see you, Father. Let them hear you. Even though I'll be speaking, you'll be speaking through me. But Lord God, you know every need in this place. You, you know every desire in this place. And Father, I thank you right now as I open my mouth under the, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I speak your word. And oh Lord God, your people will hear what you are saying to them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Costa Baba. Anybody have a word from the Holy Ghost right now? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ha <laughs> Water baptism. Let me say this. I just hear, heard the Spirit of God say that you got to remember that I am Alpha am, and Omega. I'm the beginning, I'm the end. And I know what is before and I know what is behind. I know what is in the middle. He says, so that's why you got to learn how to trust me. That's why you got to learn how not to be afraid of the realm of the Spirit. Because in the Spirit realm, there is no accidents. There is no mistakes. Everything is perfect in the realm of the spirit so that's why you need to learn how to walk more in the spirit than in the flesh because the flesh you can be guided by your eye but your eye may not see the real so it got to be in the realm of the spirit there, there's an attack against the body of Christ that we're going to have to learn how to walk in the spirit realm because the attack is in the spirit realm now he'll use people. You can't get mad with the people. You get mad with the devil. Now you'll have to be able to see past that person. And when you are, you'll begin to see the power of the Holy Ghost. And you'll begin to speak not to that person but to the spirit. And when you take authority over the spirit, the person dries, dies. Oh, thank you, Lord God. If you take authority over that person, that spirit will just find somebody else. You know uh, what you got? Uh, the spirit of God just showed me this years ago. You know how these little, uh, uh, these men used to, this, this person would control this thing down here with his fingers. Puppet, yeah. And uh, he could have that puppet saying things. And, and, it, and what happened is, you, we'd be so fascinated with the puppet, we don't realize it's, it's the man's fingers that's causing this puppet to act all crazy, to say all these crazy things. And uh, I think that's what we end up doing a lot of times. We're, we're looking at the puppet. 
and still look at the puppeteer. Let's look at the, the, the guy that's controlling it. And you see, you have authority over it. You got to speak it, though. Talk to the thing that's controlling the puppet. And you'll begin to see the power. You'll begin to see victory in the spirit realm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to talk briefly about baptism, water baptism, the supernatural plan of God. I want you to forget about what you've heard about baptism. And also, I'll, uh, I, I did a, we started this uh, Wednesday on the 3rd, April the 3rd. So if you, ha if you didn't hear that, you need to go back because I'm not going to have a chance to, to go back and go over all that again. But uh, if, you, if you didn't hear that, go back and listen to that. And then we're gonna, because we're going to be building on this morning what we talked about Wednesday. Now, uh, the reason I'm focusing in on baptism is because we're going to have a baptism next Thursday, or uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, and uh, it's going to be one of the greatest move of God. God's going to show up. There's going to be a manifestation of his spirit. And uh, I I've got such an anticipation. I and to this day, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know what's going to be happening, but I know God's going to move. Now, we, if, you, if you want to get baptized, call the office. Those of you that hadn't done it already. Uh, and by the way, next Sunday will be casual Sunday. So it will actually need candidates that's going to be ba being baptized to, to wear dark clothing and bring at least bring two towels, two large towels. Uh, if, you, if you hear this message, you realize that you need to get baptized or re-baptized. You need to come. Because the glory of God is going to usher you into your, your ministry, usher you into your purpose. And as we go through scripture this morning, we're going to begin to see the power of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bapt I wrote down, baptism is an important event in a believer's life, in his walk with Christ. The Bible encourages us to, to, to undergo water baptism. Because as believers, water baptism is making a public confession of our faith in Christ. In other words, everybody know now that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Now, baptism is not what saves you. It's your confession in Christ is what saves you. But baptism is just a, a, a comrade to, to your salvation and it's causing us to walk in victory. Now, the reason I'm driving this home because I think a lot of times, you know, we, we take this lightly. And uh, as we begin to, to drill down into this and asking God, Lord, reveal yourself in baptism the importance of it and show me how to rely how to how to take this baptism now if Jesus was subject to baptize, get baptized what, don't you think you need to be baptized Jesus said told John the Baptist oh, oh yeah you're right John the Baptist said well Jesus I need to be baptized of you he said well suffer it to be so right now so we can fulfill the plan of God in essence and so that's what's happening. We're going we're gonna to enter into water baptism, and I tell you, God is going to usher a lot of us into our ministry. You know, when Jesus got, came up out of the water, the, the Bible said the Spirit of God put him in, drove him into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. In other words, I believe he drove him into that wilderness to be proven by the devil. In other words, to prove that he had the authority. See, and a lot of times what we need to do, we need to say, Lord, I thank you for your faith and your confidence in me. You have faith and confidence to know that I'm going to take authority over the devil. The greater one's on the inside of you. A lot of times, you know, we need a push. We need a kick. And baptism is your kick into the realm of the spirit. Get about the will of God. Get about the presence of God. And if you allow him to kick you in there, now again, you're going to forget about what you've heard. Because everything we're going to talk about this morning is about the word of God. And if we allow the word to drive us, oh, we're going to be changed forever. Baptize means to submerge or immerse. Uh, and repent means to turn away from your sin. It's one thing to be sorry because of what you do. But it's another thing to turn away from it. Well, repenting is turning away. Yeah, you're sorry and you, and you, and you, and you regret it. But now because 
I repent it now. I'm turning and going the opposite direction away from this sin, away from what had me bound. You see, I'm going to tell you some people of God, there are a lot of, there are a lot of things that we're struggling with. Oh, we need to let go and let God. And a lot of times, water baptism is go what's going to do it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't understand all the ramifications of it. You know, and I'm going to go through Scripture, and I'm going to show you why it's important, what Jesus said about it. And all I know is I'm just going to obey him. I'm just going to do what he said in his word. Now, before we go on, we, last time we looked at some examples on uh, um, being baptized, you know, being baptized before you get the Holy Spirit, being baptized after you get the Holy Spirit, being baptized to get into your ministry, and also being rebaptized. Once you come to a knowledge, you know, a lot of times people get baptized, and uh, we're going to go through some more scripture on it. A lot of times people get baptized because their brother got baptized, their mama got baptized, but there was no revelation to them of why. Well, once you get knowledge, revelation, knowledge on it, and oh, Baba Cole, you'll begin to say, God, I see it now. Jesus is my Lord. First you repent, and then you get baptized. Change your mind. Change your direction. Change it. And the, because well, now the Holy Ghost is what convicts us. And when we open our mouth, open our mouth and say, Jesus, you are my Lord. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to guide me. And I want the world to know, I want this to be a sign to the world that Jesus is my Lord. I'm going to get baptized. Everybody say, thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, let's look at Mark chapter uh, 10. We're going to see now, uh, you know, most of, a lot of times we have, you know, little children to get baptized. And, and what, what we're going to see here, Jesus is going to show us a lot of times, minister, those children know more than you do. Why? Because they have the faith. Did you know you have to, you have to teach a child to doubt? Because they, naturally they're going to have faith. If you tell them something, they're going to believe it. Well, that's what God wants us to be. That's the way he wants us to, be, us to be. And so you have to teach a child. And I understood what he meant. He said, that's what the kingdom of God is like. You come to the, in the kingdom like a little child. Come in faith. Come believing. Don't doubt. Don't let the world hold you in doubt and unbelief. No. And he said, now, if the children recognize the importance of baptism, you ought to recognize it too. Now, this is an example of, of, of what Jesus did how the respect he had for children. Mark chapter 10, we're going to pick it up in verse 13. And they brought young children to him that he should teach them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. And that's what some of us will do today. Those child, your children don't know what they're doing. Yes, they do. You just get out the way. You don't know what you're doing, but they do. You don't know how to walk in faith, but they do. Verse 14, and when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. In other words, when he saw them uh, uh, telling them not to bring the children, he was much displeased and said to them, suffer the little children or allow the little children to come unto me and don't forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Said the kingdom of God is just like this little child. Mm. Verse 15, verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took up the child in his arms, put his hands on him, and what? Blessed him. And, you know, in order for him to take him up in his arms, they, had, they, they couldn't have been 18. You're talking about little children. You're talking about somebody that's just going to follow you. That's going to hear what the word said and going to follow. You see, a little child don't try to figure out whether it's true or not. A little child just take for granted. Well, he said it. I believe it. I'm going to step out on it. That's what God wants. That's the way God wants us. Let's hear the word. And in particular, let's hear the word on baptism. And let's begin to step out on what God is saying. 
Luke chapter 30. We're going to go through a bunch of some scriptures because I want your faith to be based on God's word, not necessarily on what I say, how I even interpret it. I want it to, your faith to be based on the word of God. Luke chapter 3. We're going to read verse 3 and we're going to drop down to verse 7. Luke chapter 3, read verse 3 and we're going to drop down to verse 7. Talk about John the Baptist. It says, and he came unto all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Now, let's explain that. He was preaching what? The baptism of repentance for the remission of the doing away of sin. Now, before that, see, all the, the, uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees knew was to get the remission of sin, you had to bring an animal and to sacrifice his blood. Now, John the Baptist is saying, all you need to do now is repent. Now, you got to turn away from your sin, repent, and be baptized. And you can have your sins remitted. Now, you know what these Pharisees were saying? That's just too easy. Well, God want to make it easy for you. The Pharisee, the religious people want to make it hard for you because it lifts them up. John the Baptist came preaching the baptism of repentance to get your sin done away with. Verse 7. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers. Well, that's something, that's something to call somebody. You snakes. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring therefore fruits worthy of repentance. And begin not to say within yourself, we have Abraham uh, to our fathers. For I say of you that God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. And now, verse 9, also the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. He said, I told you to bring fruit worthy of your repentance. See, if you don't have no fruit, you're going to be cut down. Oh, my God. Verse 10, and the people ask him, saying, well, what do you want me to do? Say, you want me to bring fruit? What do you want? Verse 11, he answered and said unto them, he that had two coats, let him impart, impart to him that hath none. He that hath meat, let him do likewise. In other words, if you have an abundance, share. So they, they won't know what to do. Verse 13, he said unto them, uh, um, verse 12 says, Then came the publican or the tax collector to be baptized. Now, and what are the prerequisites to be baptized? Repent. And he said unto them, Master, what shall I do? And he said, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. In other words, don't take no more taxes than what you should. And the soldiers likewise commanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither uh, uh, accuse any falsehood, and be content with your wages. Be content with the money you made. And as the people, and as the people were in expectation, and all men mused of, uh, in their hearts of John, whether he was the Christ or not, See, he was giving them some instruction. They were saying, is this the Christ? John answered in verse 16, saying unto them, I indeed baptize with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. John the Baptist is the forerunner of Christ. John the Baptist came baptizing unto repentance. Baptizing you. So when you, because you repented, now you can walk in victory. Now you are free. I've heard people say, and we're going to go show, show you this, uh, you know, baptizing, baptism will wash away your sin. Well, there's some truth to that. But if you read the, the, the phrase right after that, it says, baptizing will rush, wash away your sin as you confess the word of God. See, the confession in the word is what does it. The baptism is just an outward show that I have given my life to the Lord Jesus. And I want the world to know it. Now I believe 
That the, and the reason I title this a supernatural plan of God, because God has a supernatural plan. In other words, if I just trust him and say, God, I may not understand everything about water baptism, but if Jesus got baptized, and if you show me in scripture what, you know, how you want me to react, I want exactly that. And God will show up in your behalf. Mark chapter 1, let's look at that. And I say, thank you, Lord. And I, I, and I need you to, you know, uh, as the Holy Spirit began to deal with you, you know, I, I need you to say, Lord, what do you want from me? Let me tell you this. Getting rebaptized surely can't hurt you. It's just enhanced, could enhance your relationship. It could enhance your purpose. So if, if, you're, if you're on the fence, so to speak, and you're wondering, should I get baptized? I've been baptized before, but should I get rebaptized? And now, and, and, and all of a sudden now, the, the Spirit of God kind of, kind of give you that nudge. You say, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to step out on the Word of God. Now, if, if, if there's no conviction, then you don't need to get rebaptized. But I want you to just stay uh, in the plan and the vein of God because we're in a season right now well, the people of God, men and women of God, we're going to have to take a stand. We're going to have to take a stand for right, right and righteousness. And a lot of things I'm going through right now may be because I haven't done that. I haven't had the power. And this supernatural plan, the supernatural plan of God's baptism, of being baptized openly and begin to allow the power of God to manifest, God wants to show up in my life. And I want to let him. Mark chapter 1, did I tell you that? Verse 2. We're going to read 2 through 9. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mark chapter 1. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Now, that's what Malachi 3 and 1, he prophesied that. He said, I'm going to send my messenger before you. He's talking about John the Baptist. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness. He baptized what? And preached baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Now, cut the beat. Let me get this. He went to the wilderness to baptize. Why? Because that's what God told him to go. The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were where? They were in the temple. He could have gone in the temple. I mean, naturally, that's where you, you know, you want to go. You want to go to the church and tell people about Jesus. But John the Baptist went to the wilderness. You know why? Because the wilderness are where the people that receive. You got to go where people are going to receive you. Now, they should receive you in the church. But if they're ingrained in tradition, if they're ingrained in what they believe, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were just so ingrained that the only way to get sins remitted is to bring me a blood sacrifice. And John the Baptist is coming bringing something new, said, no, just repent and get baptized. And your sins will be remitted. Done away with. Oh, too easy. But it's God's plan for me. God's got an easy plan for you. We just want to be hard. Remember Naaman say, uh, you know, uh, he wanted to be healed of his leprosy, and, 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 and the man of God said, well, go dip seven times. He didn't want to do that. He wanted something hard to do. And his servant said, if he had told you to do something hard, you would have done it. Now he tell you to do something easy, and you're going to get balk at it. See, God, is, uh, some of us, there are some things he wants us to do. And to us, it seems easy. We, we haven't suffered enough what Christ has already suffered for us. You're going to suffer enough when people talk about you. But you got to step out on that word. You are not suffering. You are not suffering again just so you can prove yourself righteous. Don't suffer again for that. Christ has already done it for us. And all he wants you to do is get baptized. Repent and get baptized. Too easy. John baptized in the wilderness, preached the baptism of repentance. Now let's drop down to verse 9. 
Mark 1, 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Jesus was baptized of who? John. That's when John said, I need to be baptized of you. Suffer it to be so now. Many things or many times in our lives, God will be trying to lead us down a path. But because of what's up here in our mind and our thinking, because what we've been programmed to, we'll think, well, that can't be God because that's too easy. Now, sometimes that will be hard. Sometimes there'll be some difficult things for us to do in the natural. But what I need to do is go back to the source. God, what do you want? What's your plan for my life? What direction should I take? I don't, I don't want to do anything that you are not pleased with. And you stay there with him until you get direction, clear direction. And that way you won't be tripped up by the enemy. Mark chapter 16 now. Let's look at that. Verses 15 and 16. We're talking about the supernatural power of water baptism. God's plan. Not your plan, but God's. Mark 16, 15. He said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized will be what? Saved. He that believeth not will be damned. So go preach the gospel. What's the gospel? Good news. You go tell them that I've come to save and deliver. You go tell them that I've come to heal. That's good news. And if a, you, you begin to, to spread the good news of healing and they receive it, the scripture say what? They're going to be healed. Here's another one. You begin to tell the good news of prosperity. All of a sudden now, people, people the enemy will come, oh, they just got a prosperity gospel. Yeah, because that's the gospel. That's the good news. And as I obey the gospel, as I obey the good news, God will elevate me. Yeah, I can get healed. I can get saved. I can get delivered. And the power of God will flow. See, God want to do all those things for me so I can go into the vineyard. Not just so I can sit in luxury, but so I can go and tell others that there's hope. There's hope for you. You don't have to be there. I can tell people that there's hope in tithing. You don't have to stay wallowing in um, uh, mediocrity all your life. No, rise up and obey the word. Mark chapter, uh, Acts chapter 8. Let's, let's read verses 12 and 13. I, need you, I know we're going through a lot of things here, but I, I want you to have something so you can go back to on baptism. Go back to and put it before God. God, what do you want me to do? And not only that, but you'll be able to share with, up, with others. Mark 8 verse 12. Um, what's happening here is in, in the beginning of this first ch chapter 8, you know, we, we, we see Paul uh, uh, stoning Stephen. And the Bible says the Christians were persecuted and they were scattered abroad because of their persecution. Well, some of them went to Samaria and Philip was one that went to Samaria. But you see, when the enemy scatter you, you got to be scattered with the word of God in your mouth. See, he's scattered you. He's going to persecute you to try to stop you from talking, to try to shut your mouth. That's when we ought to open it more. So, in verse, Acts chapter 8, beginning in verse 12, it says, uh, <clears throat> but when they believe, now Philip is teaching now, he's preaching about the gospel of Christ. When they believe Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were what? Baptized, men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now Simon was a sorcerer. And in that same chapter, it talks about how he had bewitched the people with trickery and sorceries, with magic. He had bewitched the people. And, and a lot of times, and so when, 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 I believe when Philip first got there, they, you know, they wanted to, well, what you say about that, Simon? You hear what he's saying? He's not saying the same thing you said. But they, signs and wonders began to manifest. 
Philip began to preach the gospel and God confirmed what? He confirmed his word. The word that was flowing out of Philip's mouth. And he'll confirm the word that's flowing out of your mouth. Not what you think. You see, if you go by what you think, then there's nothing to confirm. But if you, <laughs> if you speak that word, he stands up. Angels, you heard what he said? Go get it. Go call that to come to pass. Oh, ha, ha. That's why we have to be careful. Don't always speak negative words, doubt and unbelief. Say, God, help me. Help me to speak your word. Help me to declare your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Acts 16. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Acts 16. Let's look at verse, four, begin at verse 14. Read 14 and 15. We're talking about water baptism. Why get baptized? Why get rebaptized? Oh, why? Uh, the anointing of God will begin to uh, flow in our lives. Acts 16, verse 14 says, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God. She did what? She worshipped God. Lydia from Thyatira worshipped God. She heard us whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of of Paul. Now, Paul was preaching the gospel. He was telling her about the good news. Lydia was not a worshiper of God. In verse 15, it says, and when she was baptized, when she was what? Baptized. Well, she was already a worshiper. Apparently, Paul must have been saying something to let her know that she needed to get baptized. So she was already a good person, already a worshiper, but there has to be something about baptism. I don't understand it. You won't understand it. But oh, I trust God. I know he has a plan for my life. When I come into the knowledge of Christ, when I begin to see the steps I should take, and I'm asking the Spirit of God, Lord, lead me down your path. If baptism is the door that's going to lead me into my purpose, if, bapt if baptism is the door that's going to lead me into the purpose and the plan of God for my life, <laughs> baptize me. When she was baptized and her household, and what? Her whole house. She besought us saying, if we have judged, if you have judged me faithful." to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she uh, constrained us. So not only was she baptized, her whole house, she was a worshiper. She was a good person. Romans chapter 3. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, let's look at Acts 22. I, I don't want to skip this. Acts 22, we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Acts 22, verses 14 and 15. And he said, the God of our fathers has chosen thee. Now he's talking about Paul. It's Ananias talking about Paul. That thou shouldest know his will and see the just one and should hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. He's prophesying. I said, Paul, you're going, to be a, a, you're going to be a demonstration of the power of God. Then in verse 16, it says, oh, Why are you tarrying? Arise, be baptized. Wash away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. Your being baptized doesn't wash away your sins. It's the calling upon the name of the Lord. You see, when you call on the name of the Lord, you say, oh, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I want you in my life. And because of that, because of a repentant heart, you change, you're going to get baptized. Washing away your sins by calling upon who? The name of the Lord. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom and direction. Mm, see that's how you call on it and you'll let his word come out of your mouth not words of the flesh not what it seems like but the word of God Romans chapter 6 
Excuse me. Romans chapter 6, we're going to read verses 3 and 4. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by what? Baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should what? walk in newness of life. What he's saying here is that baptism is a symbol of your resurrection from your old life. Just like Jesus was resurrected from the dead, now you are resurrected from your old life, so you ought to walk. Now, what the last phrase said, huh? So we should walk in newness of life. We're going to walk like a new person. Because what we are a new person. Oh, and if you're struggling with some things and you mess up, all you got to do now is just say, Lord, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? Too. Before you get it out your mouth, do it, yes. Because what? New person. And I want to show you something, how the Spirit of God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, will begin to deal with you. Every time you mess up, the Holy Ghost has been elbowing you in the side. Oh. Now, it's up to you to say, I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? You do that, and all of a sudden now, the power of God come, becomes available to you. Thank your Holy Ghost. Thank your Holy Ghost. Acts 2, verse 36. We're going to pick it up at verse 36. This is what Peter now is preaching on the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Ghost fell. Acts 2 and 36, it says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same Jesus, whom you crucified, Lord and Christ. The Jesus that you crucified? God has made the same Jesus, Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said, uh, said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brother, well, what, what we can do? What can we do? And Peter said unto them, repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the what? Remission of sins. And you are what? Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. They heard the word and they repented. They, 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 their hearts were pricked. Now what can we do? We messed up, we sinned. What can we do? Well, ain't nothing you can do about the sin now because you've already done it. But you can repent. And the, what that means is you never do that again. You repent and you're going towards Jesus now. You're going away from that sin towards Jesus. He said, repent. This is what? Be baptized for that sin, for the remission of the sin. And as we begin to do that, repent, uh, verse 38 says, Peter said to them, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of the doing away of sin, and you'll receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Verse 41. And they that what gladly received the word, were what? Baptized. They that gladly received the word were baptized and the same day they were added to them 3,000 souls. There are people that's waiting for you. They're waiting to gladly receive the word. Now, let me tell you something. If you wait until you get everything right, if you wait until you get perfect, you'll never give the word. You'll never tell anybody about Jesus because you'll, you'll never be perfect. Jesus is perfect. You are made perfect when you accept him. But in your flesh, you're gonna, there's going to be a potential for you to make mistakes. Unless you're like me. But in your flesh, you're going to make mistakes. So the enemy, don't let him talk to you and say, well, you know, you can't tell them about that. Because look, you did, look at what you did two days ago. And you say, yeah, you're right. Now you, you're going thinking about that and God, you know, missed an opportunity to minister. You know, sometimes you just, you just have to be bold. Just open your mouth and say, well, you know, I believe the word. This is what the word says about it. Now, I missed it in this area, but I still believe the word. I still honor the word. Just because I fail, I'm going to tell you that you don't have to fall. 
You, can, you are an overcomer. Don't do this because I'm perfect. Do this because Jesus is perfect. Because his word is forever self. Do this because I'm done because you have a God has a plan and a purpose for your life and he wants you walking in victory. He wants you walking in power. He wants you walking in authority. The gate of the doorway could be, everybody say it could be, could be baptism. Well, I've been baptized once. I know a person that got baptized at least 10, seems like they said. Now, Again, I'm, I'll, I'll make this statement. Baptism, getting rebaptized can't hurt you. So don't be concerned about am I, am I disbelieving something? Am I, is something happening where I'm getting rebaptized, but I don't, you know, I don't understand a lot of things? Well, rebaptism can't hurt you. But missing out on baptism might. So I would encourage you to seek the face of God. Say, Lord, show me how to minister to you so you can minister to me through baptism. Matthew chapter 21. Jesus, to show you what he thought of baptism, in this example, he uses the baptism of John to shut the mouths of his critics. Now, he could have used anything else, but he used water baptism because that just shows you how important that was to him. Matthew 21, beginning at verse 12. We're going to read 12 through 15, and we'll drop down to verse 23. Matthew 21, verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple. He overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said to them, it's written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. You brought all this stuff in here and you're selling it. Verse 14. When he had, now when he had done that in, in 13, cast them all out. Verse 14 says, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. The temple that he had just cleansed, the temple that he had cast all of them out, all the money changes out. Then there was time, there was room for people to come in and be healed. There was room for the blind and the lame. You see, when you cleanse the temple, not only your temple, but it could be this temple. When we get rid of the junk then the people can come in and get healed and delivered and set free. When we get rid of the junk in our lives, then people are be able to come to us. And you can be able to prophesy and lay your hands on them and speak the word of God. Everybody say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Then the blind came into the temple and healed them. Verse 15. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. They were displeased. Now, why would you be displeased? Because somebody got healed. Why would you be other than to lift up yourself? Other than you about to lose your hold on the people. We're in the temple here. As a matter of fact, you are one of the main reasons they're selling stuff in the temple. So you probably got mad when Jesus kicked them all out. And then now the temple, which it should have been in the first place, now the, a place where they can come and get healed, where they can come and get delivered. This is what I want you to see. Drop down to verse 23. <clears throat> and when he was coming to the temple, talking about Jesus now, he had come back into the temple. Now, between what we just read and where we are now, you know, Jesus had gone and cursed the fig tree and it had dried up from the root. And in verse 23, he said, and when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders came unto him as he was teaching. While he was teaching, they come up to him. And they said, by what authority doest thou these things? And who gave you this authority? <coughs> now, what I'm going to share with you that that word authority, as you see, 
And it can be translated power or ability or authority. Now, in the Greek, when they, when they wrote that word, that you see aloud, most of the time they translated it as authority. But let me read something. Let me read that verse in a different way. And you just listen and see what then we're going to explain it. I'm going to show you how, what kind of connotation it could have had. So when they asked him, you know, what do you do? How, where do you get this from? And by what authority or by what power does, do you do these things? And who gave you this ability? So what they were asking for, they, they say, I see what you can do. I see you're doing it. How are you doing it? Now, let's look at this another way. Could it be that they were looking at him and say, wow, <clears throat> I can see he got that. I wonder where he get it from. I wonder if he'll tell us where he got that from. Because where he got it from, I'm going to see if I can go get it too. Let's, let's, let's just look at it that way. Now, let's see Jesus reply. Thank you, Lord God. Who gave you this authority? Tim, how, how did you get this authority now? How did you get this ability? In verse 24, Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing. And if you tell me, and if you tell me, I in likewise will tell you who, what authority I do these things. In other words, I can t if you tell me this, I'll tell you who gave me this ability. That's really what he's saying. Then he said the baptism of John. Which was it? From heaven or men? And they reason with themselves, saying, if we say from heaven, he's going to say, well, how come you didn't believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the people. Because they think John's a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, oh, we don't know, we can't tell. He said unto them, well, okay, neither I'm going to tell you where I got my power from. Now, look at this. They knew the answer. They knew what they thought, but they were afraid. You see, the Pharisees and Sadducees thought he's not from God. He's from man, but they weren't going to say that because they knew the people believed that he was from God. So rather than telling the truth, I'll put it this way, rather than saying what they believed, they wanted to give an answer based on what the people thought. And, and you know what Jesus was saying? You are not ready for this. Even if I told you where I got this ability from, you would not be ready for it. He wasn't just being rude and crude. He was letting them know that they weren't ready for this ability yet. And he used baptism, water baptism, to quiet them, to let them know that you are not quite ready. You have these subtle tricks and traps. But I want to show you that there's a greater power and a greater authority than the thought that you've been given by men. Yeah, you're over this temple. You, men have, have, have lifted you up. But God, the greater authority, overwhelms you. Now, you see, <coughs> they knew that there was something different. They knew there had to be something else. <laughs> <coughs> these were the Pharisees and the Sadducees so they knew that the power of God was there and they wanted it but they wanted it why they wanted it they wanted it so the people so they could be lifted up in the eyes of the people wrong answer Jesus knew that and that's why he said you're not ready yet in essence he said uh, if you if you Actually, what he was saying, if you won't answer me, then I won't tell you. Because they could have they could have given an answer that they thought. But you know, they themselves knew that was the wrong answer. They, I believe down deep down within, they knew he was from God, but he was taking their limelight. He come preaching this baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. That all they got to do is be baptized. And we don't already told them, you, bring, you need to bring me an animal. I, you need the blood sacrifice. We're going to do this once a year. And remit your sin, get rid of your sin. And John the Baptist now, he's coming from God to let them know they don't have to do that. 
This is a new era. I want you to know that God is about to usher us into a new era. I want you to just begin to say, God, help me to be ready for this new era. Help me, Lord God. Prepare me, Lord God, to begin to minister your word, to begin to preach the gospel, the good news of Christ. And I thank you, Lord, that as I, as I preach the good news, people will get healed, souls will get saved. I thank you, Lord God, people will be set free from bondage. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that we will be able to walk in victory. You know, the Spirit of God has been dealing with us about the, what, the spirit of deception. We need to be careful that we are not warned. And you can be deceived by not fulfilling the plan of God. Not allowing God's word to come out of your mouth. Because of, just like these Pharisees, because of what people are going to say. You'll never be able to please people. You'll never be able to speak and always satisfy people. I want God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. If I'm pleasing him, that's all that should be, that should suffice for me to please God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for a revelation knowledge of your word. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for opening up unto us, Lord God, water baptism and the importance of it. I thank you, Lord God, for the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I have to I ask you, Lord God, to let us decrease. Lord God, so when we open our mouths, when we begin to speak, when we begin to declare the word of God, let the people, Lord God, be convicted by the Holy Ghost. Not by the wisdom of my words, but by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. I humble myself under your mighty hand. We humble ourselves under the hand of God. And Father, whatever you direct, however you direct, whatever you say, we will obey. We're going to step out. In and on your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence right now. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the glory and for your anointing. Now I'm asking you, Spirit of God, to you speak to your people. Lord God, their desire is to please you, Father. Their desire is to fulfill their purpose. Their, their desire, Lord God, is to walk in victory, walk in power, walk in authority. Their desire, Lord God, is to walk in the ministry that you've called them unto. Now, Lord, I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for sensitive ears and seeing eyes. We can see in the realm of the Spirit. We want to thank you for insight and eyesight. Insight to know what to do, eyesight to see what to do. And Father, we just thank you for that right now. Lord God, we give you all the praise and all the glory for everything you're doing in our lives. Thank you for your presence right now. Thank you for your anointing right now. Lord, I thank you, Father God. Show us how to get out of your way. Show us how to decrease so you can increase. Don't let us ever be blinded, Lord God, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Religious leaders, Lord. Oh, Spirit of the living God, we want you more than anything else in life. And we give you the praise and glory for everything you're doing. Every eye closed. If you're watching or if you're in here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you can do, you right now, you can ask him to come into your heart. You can purpose in your heart right now to get baptized or get rebaptized. And the baptism we're talking about is what the Bible talks about is a submersion into water, taking you underwater. Just like Christ was buried, you will be buried in baptism. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just go with Scripture, not what they told you in your religious doctrine. Just go with Scripture and say, Holy Spirit, I need you. So if you're not born again, or if you're in a backslidden condition. If you're in a backslidden condition, you just say, Lord, I'm sorry, I repent, I need you back into my life. If you've never accepted him as your Lord and your Savior, you say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. He'll come in and he'll put you on the right path. 
if you're in a backslidden condition, you'll put your back on the right path. And you will be a light in this dark world. Whenever light comes in the darkness, whenever light shows up, darkness has to flee. That's what happened. That's what happened with you. Now you are the light of the world. And you're going to take the light of the gospel and you're going to shine it in dark places. And darkness has to flee. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, that we're, you're preparing us, Lord God, for this end time harvest. You're preparing us, Lord, for the overflow. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for putting it in our spirits. What to say and when to say it and how to say it. And I thank you for the conviction power Convicting the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Father, for your compassion flowing through us right now. Oh, Lord God, take the scales off of our eyes where we can see people the way you see them. We want and we need and we desire that anointing, that yoke-destroying, burden-removing anointing. And, Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Jesus is now your Lord. You've asked him to come into your heart. You've asked him to, to redirect your path. You've asked him to come back in your life. So sell it. He looks at the heart. Man looks at the outside. Now because you repent it, you're going to you turn away from that sin. You need the power of God to do that. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you maintain your cause. And he'll show up in your behalf. He'll move in your behalf. Lord, I thank you right now for the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, you have your way. I'm asking you to do what no other person can, nobody else can. I'm asking you to let the convicting power touch the hearts of your people. Everybody under the sound of my words, the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit, touch them. Draw them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Draw them into your plan and your purpose. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for change lives right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we give you all the praise and all the glory for everything you're doing in our lives. Oh, Lord Jesus, I humble myself under your mighty hand. I submit to you right now. Let your presence and your power, let your anointing, Lord God, Destroy yokes and remove burdens. We need the anointing. Lord God, we depend on the anointing. So we said thank you. Lord God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. If you're in this house and you, <clears throat> you need prayer, if you have any questions about what we discussed or what we talked about, God has an answer. You ask somebody and God will reveal to you <clears throat> his plan for your life. If you're in the house and you just need someone to agree with you in prayer or if you just have a question, just come. Because your desire now is to please God. Your desire is to be in the will of God, the plan of God for your life. Your desire is to make decisions in line with what God desires for you. Every eye closed. And you'll meditate on the things of God, the things that God has for you. I want you to know that the, the anointing is in the house. His presence is here. So whatever you need, he has it here for you. You are not here by accident. You're here on divine order of the Spirit of God, divine order of the Holy Ghost. He's directing your path. path. So if you need prayer, come. And we're believing God that He's showing up. He's going to manifest in your life. You see, it's the anointing. It's not by might or power, but it's by His Spirit. And God wants to show Himself strong in your behalf. I'm going to ask you, please, if you're in your seat, just to pray. Pray in the Spirit if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Now what you're doing, you're interceding for those that's up here. You're blocking, 
blind out, blocking out distraction. And you're allowing the Holy Ghost to have his way. And you are allowing him to use you so he can have his way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Please pray in the Holy Ghost. Please pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. See her Thank you, Lord Jesus. See Kahata. Oh, bless him, bless him. Oh, bless him. Anointing, Father. We thank you for the anointing, Lord. Oh, we thank you for your presence, Lord God. She had Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. See Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for answering prayer, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for perfecting everything, Lord God, that concerns us. Oh, Lord God. See her Thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord God, for open doors. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We trust you with all of our hearts. May not a child hold on this day. Thank you, Lord God. She had done it. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's already been done. Just thanking it for it. You just thank it for what it's already done. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm, yes, of course, Baba. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, you're such a good God. Thank you for answering prayers right now. Thank you, Lord God, for a move of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for perfecting lives, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for fixing those things that concerns us. Oh, Lord God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're such a good God. Such a merciful God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord. It's all we're doing. We just receive it right now. We answer every prayer we preach right now, Father. We receive it right now. And we thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Oh, we'll take none of your glory, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, your presence, Father. Your presence. Oh, your presence, Father. Heal the hurt, Lord God. Every need, every need meet right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She had that over there. She had that over there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She had that over there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She had that over there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, L
Thank you, Lord Jesus. She had a lava bosa. She had a lava cosi hata. She had a lava bosa. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. She had a lava bosa. She had a lava bosa. She had a lava bosa. As they continue to minister here at the altar, and if you haven't given your tithe and your offering, you haven't put your tithe and your offering on the altar, we'll ask you to do that right now. Remember, you're coming with purpose. Sanctified altars. You are a cheerful giver. You give because you want to love, because you love God. <coughs> you're giving out of a heart of love. So as we give, as we sow seed, we can expect a harvest. God wants to do some supernatural things in your life. This is his way of doing it. Giving you seed to sow. So you can sow your seed and be blessed in the name of Jesus. God wants to do some supernatural things in your behalf. Take the seed that he's given you and sow it. And we'll begin to see the power of God manifest in the name of Jesus. Close up, Baba. As you bring, we're allowing the Spirit of God to speak to you. He's giving you wisdom and direction on your finances, on how to administer the finances, on what to do with the finances, on who they give, and what situation to give. God is manifesting right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Go, Baba Kaha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to remind everybody, including those that's watching about live stream, for the baptism on tomorrow, I mean on Sunday, next Sunday, be sure you bring two large towels, a change of clothing so you can get baptized, and let your clothing be dark. You know, something that people can't see through when you get wet. Uh, and I tell you, I, I need you to come with expectancy. Come with expectation. Even if you're not getting baptized, come with expectation for the people that are. And asking, we're asking God for his miracle working power. We're asking God to show up. I'm asking for the anticipation. I'm asking what he's began to show me. He'll show up in the lives of the people and in your life as you begin to seek the face of God on behalf of others. And God will show up for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. She tanada. Thank you for what he's doing. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for answering prayer, Father. Thank you for a move of the Holy Ghost. She hatada. Oh, thank you, Lord God. She hatada. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She hatada. She hatada kata. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She hatada rabusa. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. She hatada rabusa. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. She hatada. She hatada. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She hatada. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She hatada. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. She hatada. Just want to thank you, Lord God. Oh, for what you've done, Father. Thank you for your anointing, Father. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She had had a double side. She had had a double side. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. She had had a double side. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She had had a double side. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She had had a double side. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She had had a double side. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you right now, Lord God. And we're going to ask you to bless your people's seed. Lord, we thank you for a financial overflow. We thank you for a breakthrough in the spirit realm. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that they've given out of a cheerful heart, a joyful heart, and they've given with expectancy. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord God, and we give you all the praise and all the glory for showing yourself mighty. Lord God, as we yield to you today, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you are showing up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for open doors right now, Father. Thank you for manifesting yourself in their lives and in their finances. Thank you, Lord God, for raises and promotions on jobs. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, oh, for cheerful, prompt to do a giver. And you are honoring us, Lord God, as we honor you today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord, thank you for my seed. God, I thank you for my harvest. Lord, I thank you for the seed. And I receive my harvest. Now I want to thank you for the harvest that my seed has produced in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your seed has produced a harvest. Continue to sow. You sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. Continue to sow and watch your seed grow. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Don't forget now, if you, you want to get baptized, call the office. And they'll uh, get, you, get you lined up. We're going to be doing that next Sunday. Anybody have a testimony, anything they want to share before we leave? Any announcements? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Again, thank you so much for coming out. Any first time visiting with us today, you're still here. Anybody visiting with us for the very first time? Again, thank you so much for coming. Tell somebody before you leave, you will never be the same. You will never be the same in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.